Welcome back to Noob School. Today I've got a good friend and Michelle Seaver. Michelle is the market president for Greenville and Spartanburg for United Community. Used to be United Community Bank, but now it's just United Community. So Michelle, why drop the bank? So why drop the bank? Because we feel that we're so much more than a bank. We uh. have different products and services to offer. So we feel like um, being just a bank maybe silos us just a little bit, but we want to be so much more to people. And what are those extra services? What kind of things? So that would be trust services, wealth management services, okay. insurance, um, different products that are not um, assumed just as a bank. Right. Wonderful. Not just loans and deposits. Wonderful. Well, I really thank you for being here um, today. I know you're busy. You probably, how many appointments have you had already today? I've already been to Spartanburg and back. Spartanburg and back. Yeah, Spartanburg and back, That's and a, a couple lot. of appointments. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's but it's good. Lot. Everybody's busy. Everyone's busy. That's true. Um, yeah. So Michelle and I have known each other, I guess, for as long as since when David worked for at Data Stream. Yes. Now, how, when would that have been? How long ago? Gosh, that would have been probably around 1998. 98. Okay. Maybe. Her, her husband David, who's been on the podcast. Uh, was was uh, one of our salespeople, so that's where Michelle and I met, <clears throat> and he was very good. But he he pivoted to real estate, where he has absolutely crushed it, and he's got one of the best social media handles of anybody around. He um, sign swap swap Seaver is um, certainly his sign swap sign swap Seaver. Yes, yeah. I get excited about sign swaps for obvious reasons, yeah. but it's so fun to watch them. I mean, he really just makes it fun and makes it different and. You know, sometimes there's people on the other side of that sign swap, too. Somebody's got to throw the sign. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's you, huh? Sometimes. Okay, all right, good. Um, well, listen, you're running, you're running uh, market president of UCB, or UC, United Community now, and that's a big deal. I mean, that's a big job. It's an important job, so I congratulate you for that. But what I'd like to do for the sake of the news <clears throat> is to back up and, and learn a little bit more about your, your history and kind of how you got there. And then we can talk more about the job kind of once we arrive, arrive there. Would that be okay? That's great. Okay. So where did you grow up? So I went to high school on here in Greenville. Okay. My dad worked for IBM okay. in the days of the I've been moved mm -hmm. days. Yeah. So my whole family is from Mississippi, huh. both my mom and my dad. Okay. They grew up there. Um, they wanted to get out. And so um, dad got a job at IBM yeah. after they got married or yeah. before they got married. And then they just moved wherever the job was. Okay. So I was actually born in Chicago, uh -huh. and then at age four, we moved to Wyckoff, New Jersey, <laughs> where we lived until I was 15. And then here? And then we moved here when I was a sophomore in high school. And what school did you go to? I went to Malden. You went to Malden? Yes. Okay. That had to be a big change for you. It, it was a big change, and we laugh about it a lot, <laughs> because um, at that time, the Greenville was not all that happening of a place right, to, to right, go to. Right. And um, where we lived in New Jersey was not where you fly in and out of. It's um, a nice, nice place. I always laugh and say that the only thing I can relate to people to explain to them where we lived, I went to the same elementary school as the Jonas Brothers. Wow. So I think that's kind of cool. But, you know, oh. looking back on it, you know, the person across the street was a um, producer for CBS Records. Mm -hmm. Somebody down the street was um, worked for... Um, Lancome, Beauty, I mean, everybody commuted into the city, mm -hmm. and then they lived and kept their families in this little suburb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a great place to grow up. I bet. I bet. Well, I'm glad, uh, for our sake, that you moved down here. <laughs> oh, we are, too, for yeah. sure. We and, um, we didn't quite fit in with, you know, Mississippi parents. We um, certainly, I mean, they, they still sounded like they're from Mississippi, <laughs> and uh, we didn't quite uh, catch on to an accent. Well, We'll, we'll take or the you. way of life. We'll take you here. So when you were in high school, did you have any idea for what kind of job you wanted to do one day? Um, I didn't. Uh -huh. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, I was a cheerleader, yeah. which some people aren't surprised by. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I, I like happy things. Yeah. I, um, I really I loved it. It was great fun. That's good. I mean, I think, you know, uh, what C. Dan Joyner played off of that cheerleader thing pretty well. Yeah. You know, with positive enthusiasm and... Um, yeah, I think that, that's interesting. You're in the right job for that in terms of the way you, you do your job with relationships and things like mm -hmm. that. That's good. Um, 
And then you went to uh, South Carolina. I did. You're a Gamecock. Yes, I'm a Gamecock. Okay. I'm a proud Gamecock. Of course, married to that Clemson Tiger yeah. that we've already referenced. Yeah. Um, have a daughter that graduated from Carolina already, mm -hmm. and then a second one that is a junior at Carolina. So the um, for many, many years, people didn't know that I was a Gamecock. That the <laughs> tables finally tilted a little bit my way when this cool girl started going to college. You've really won the battle, the home battle, because you got two kids, both at Carolina. I do say that I did, yes. You won. Yes. Not just this past football season, but yes. Yeah. This one, too, I believe. But we'll see. Feeling good. Knock on wood. And so, then, yes, um, went to Carolina, um, had a great four years there, um, joined a sorority, um, did some leadership things, was uh, president of sorority council mm -hmm. my junior and senior year, mm -hmm. um, which was really just a great experience of, you know, bridging through all the different um, different sororities mm -hmm. and kind of bringing everybody together to, you know, accomplish the greater good. So you were president not just of the, your sorority, but of the council. The council, right. I was not president of the sorority. I not responsible for all of them. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, you know how many people I hired out of Clemson, Carolina, Walford, Firm, and Citadel over the years, how many of them were president of something like that when they were in college. They were athletes or they were president of something. They just had something that made them stand out a little bit from the crowd, that they were going to be good salespeople. Well, I remember in my interview, so I might be fast forwarding us just no, a little okay. bit. So, um, well, I, I did work during college also. So during the summers, not during the school year, my dad told me my job was to go to school. Mm -hmm. But during the summers, he told me I had to get a real job because I needed to get a real job eventually. So um, while I did want to go to Hilton Head mm -hmm. and work at the old post office, which is what all the cool people did, mm -hmm. and you know, follow a little bit of Hootie and the Blowfish or Jupiter Coyote or whoever mm -hmm. was touring around at that point, mm -hmm. um, I went and was a bank teller at Carolina First Bank Wow! during my summers in college. Okay. So I think that when I, when I finally went to my final interview for the training program for post college, you know, they asked me, they said, gosh, you know, your grades aren't quite as good as we want them to be. And they said, tell us about that. I was an accounting major, mm -hmm. um, didn't love accounting, but majored in accounting because my dad said that was a great business degree. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I was a little bit too far down the road once I figured out that's yeah. not what I wanted to do <clears throat> mm -hmm. to back up. But I told them that I had leadership skills that maybe some of the other candidates might have. Mm -hmm. So while I couldn't completely focus on studying all the time, I was able to you know, run this group of folks that had a pretty big responsibility yeah. and implemented different policies during that time. So it's not always the most popular job to have either. Well, I think that's a good learning point for the, for the noobs listening is, you know, they asked you a hard question mm -hmm. and you, you, you didn't say that you didn't, you didn't slunk away from it, but you had an answer, you know, and they could take the answer or they could leave it, but at least you had an answer. Yeah. And I didn't know the answer going in either. It wasn't something that I prepped for. I didn't yeah. know that that was yeah. not good enough. Yeah. Um, now, how long you took that job out of college? How long before you got your MBA? So I don't have my MBA. And it says MBA on there. It says, I thought it said something about Darla Moore School. Well, Darla Moore School is the business school. Okay. So you got your business degree yes. from there. Okay, yep. I got it. I got yep. it. I got it. So okay. I didn't. I thought about it. I actually was um, yeah. considering getting my MBA straight out of college and yeah. um, ended up getting the job in the training program and ended up going that route. Okay. With the thought that I'd go back and do it. And so but never did. your accounting degree, how did you figure out to make the bank a place that you applied for? So because I worked for three summers mm -hmm. for the bank. So the yeah. first summer, it was in 1991, um, the bank had five branches mm -hmm. at that time. And so I was a summer teller. So I worked somebody's maternity leave, mm -hmm. worked out great. It yeah. was really fun. Um, the second summer I worked as a CSR because they needed somebody. Mm -hmm. I remember somebody walking past my desk and asking me what I thought Prime was gonna move to. And I made something up. And at the same time, the president of the bank was walking by and heard my explanation, yeah. which was just something I'd made up because yeah. I didn't know what that was at yeah. the time. Yeah. And he came back and he explained it to me. You know, at that time it was just rates on a sheet of paper mm -hmm. and prime rate was at the bottom. So I just knew that there was this number, you know, down there at the bottom. Yeah. And then the third year I needed to take one summer school class and the bank had just bought 
a bank in Colombia. It was growing, expanding, had bought um, Republic Bank shares in Colombia, yeah. and the timing worked out really great, and they needed a float teller for the summer or a float CSR, yeah. and they had somebody that already knew what to do. So they let me take an 8 o'clock class and then go straight to work. Okay, so you kind of just roll right into it. I kind of did just roll right into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I agree with your dad about the accounting degree. I, I mean, I certainly didn't take it, but... Um, you know, Warren Buffett says the two most important things he would recommend young people do to prepare for business is learn accounting and learn how to speak in public. Hmm. Interesting. Two great pieces two great of advice. Things, yeah. Yes, for sure. You know, we um, I, I, we work with at the bank Legacy Charter, mm -hmm. and we have a um, a program with there, a mentorship program with them. And these kids are so amazing and so smart. I had two last year. I'm getting ready to start with two this year. And they know what they're going to do. They have it all mapped out. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, they are so ahead of where I was. Because yeah. I did not have it all mapped out. Yeah. Well, me too. And again, that's part of why I do this, this noob school. So I'm trying to encourage people, particularly in college, to think about it and start to plan out and practice interview mm -hmm. and where do they want to be. Um, so I think it's really important. But, yeah, the charter school people, I think they get, they get a lot of coaching, right, mm -hmm. on how to, how to do that stuff. And once you, once you wake up to it, I couldn't quite wake up to it when I was that age. I would hear it, people would say things, but I didn't really hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. absolutely. They would say it's really important that you look at all these colleges and I'd say, well, not this weekend. Yeah. You know, i got things to do. Well, and I thought I just wanted to go to college and – you know, figure it out. I didn't know. Right. I thought you only knew what you wanted to do if you were a doctor or a lawyer. Right. I didn't think everybody else had to figure it out. Right. Um, but sometimes I feel like it finds you. That's true. Good point. Well, it certainly found you in a good way. So you, you did your thing uh, at the bank, and then the bank eventually sold to TD Bank. Yes. So I went to work for Carolina First out right. of college right. and stayed there about two and a half years. Oh, that's right. Um, I was managing the main office in downtown Greenville mm -hmm. and the Cleveland Street office. Um, I wanted to go into private banking and I had met somebody through Leadership Greenville mm -hmm. that was in private banking at Wachovia. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was leaving Carolina first, they said, well, that's kind of what you do now. And I'm like, but I want to really do it. Yeah. So I left, went to Wachovia, um, did a year. They, they needed me to do a job for a year. So I did that job for a year and then reminded them that they said that I could go work in, in private banking. <laughs> so went into private banking, um, worked there for about seven years mm -hmm. and loved it. Mm -hmm. I love the planning part. I love helping somebody achieve their goals. Yeah. I have a couple of customers that, um, you know, I don't, I don't name names, but one that sticks out to me that still is my customer a couple years later, doesn't even live here, that was running a big international company, mm -hmm. and we helped um, plan his retirement. Mm. Nice. So when you ran that, when you were doing the wealth management, what was it called, wealth management group? Mm -hmm. Yep. How many clients would you have at one time? So at, at Wachovia, we, I was a private <clears throat> banker or a wealth management associate, and so we, we didn't limit it to the number of mm -hmm. people you could deal with. It was more what you, what you could handle. Okay. And you still had production goals. Um, so there were, you know, you kind of had to balance, okay. balance that. And then um, once I left, so I'm a big believer in not, you know, people talk about not burning bridges, mm -hmm. but I'm a big believer in not burning bridges. And um, one of my coworkers was getting um, phased, you know, part of a right-sizing of the team mm -hmm. after the Wachovia First Union merger that became Wachovia, that person got right-sized, and I helped set him up at Carolina First. Nice. And I told um, then the president of the bank, I said, gosh, I feel like I just gave up my backup job. Mm -hmm. And he heard that and came circling back around and said, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't throwing it out there to be anything. It was just like, gosh, I hope I didn't just, yeah. you know, I'm a mom. I have two babies. And, um, you know, David had a really... Um, flexible schedule, but was, you know, early in his career too. And so I needed to work. And mm -hmm. so I needed to make sure I always had a job mm -hmm. and had good benefits mm -hmm. to take care of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And so I ended up having this discussion with um, the president and then ended up going back to Carolina first okay. and um, being the, the head of the private banking group and getting it started and then taking it from there. But um, 
from a sales perspective, I think yeah. Wachovia really taught me the sales <clears throat> piece. Mm -hmm. um, I When Wachovia and First Union came together, um, we, we had rankings that came out you know, every month on our team. When we came together, I was the number one um, wealth management associate in the bank. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't rank it the same after that. <laughs> was that based on like assets under management? Or? It was loans. It was deposit. It was trust. Oh, it was everything. insurance. It was investment assets. It okay. was, it was, you All had to be together. very well-rounded and you had to hustle for sure. And so how would you typically get uh, a new client in Wachovia? Would it be someone who was doing normal banking there and they would prefer you? Sometimes it was. Yeah. Um, Sometimes, you know, it's definitely not cold calling right. on people. It's right. definitely somebody that may already be there that the branch identifies as has additional needs yeah. um, that you need to talk to them about. And it's relationship. You know, it doesn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. It's a long sales process. Yeah. Um, you know, trust. It takes not just the trust as in a trust department, but they, people have to trust you yeah. and know that you are going to be there for them in the good times and the bad right. and that you're going to... Um, be somebody that they can talk to and not that's, have a fear of repeating. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one to, to how do, how does a salesperson who doesn't know the person, how do they go from stranger to trusted ally? You know, what do you do and how long does that take, roughly? I think you have to invest the time. Mm -hmm. And you've got to invest it in things that don't um, immediately pad your pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's not the initial, um, that's where I was most successful, I feel like, was investing in something that was going to have a longer term um, sales timeline. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't looking for the initial yeah. hit, so to speak. It was mm -hmm. something that you were going to put put your time in. Um, I remember feeling really rewarded when, um, sad situations, of course, when you have a husband and a wife that are getting a divorce mm -hmm. and they both come to you to help them after <laughs> that. And, you know, you've got to, you got to divide everything yeah. um, and make sure that, you know, everything's really separate. So could you take care of both of them? Yeah. Okay. I you didn't can. know that. All right. Yep. All right. You can. Um, Just you asking know. for a friend. Asking for a friend, yeah. of course. But, I mean, it's not, you know, I think you can. You can choose to or you can choose not to. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what the person's comfortable with. Okay. And I let them make that decision. Not so me. how do you go from that? to being uh, the president? So when I moved to Carolina first yeah. to um, start the private banking group, really, they had yeah. a couple people there. And so they threw a director title on me and um, told me to go. And so we grew it to having private bankers in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. So that was the footprint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had to hire people in all these markets. They, of course, reported into the market. Mm -hmm. So I got to understand the struggle between um, line of business and um, the market, you know, never want people to, to be pulled out of the market. Mm -hmm. I think that they've got to have that local mm -hmm. buy-in yeah. for them to be successful. Yeah. And, you know, I believe that that today as yeah. well, but I just wanted to be their support. But something I never let go of, which is, this is interesting, and I'll have another point on this, is the interaction with the customer. I think that is so important. I feel like if we don't have that, then we lose the reason that we're really there yeah. is to take care of the customer. We lose our focus. We lose our our edge to really have um, an understanding. So what do you mean so, by interaction? Do you mean that they talk, they go and meet with and talk to, or what do you? I still have customers that I take care of okay. directly. Okay. Oh, and so, that, you, that you personally mm -hmm. and, and your other execs wouldn't completely, yeah, I get it. You know, there was a thing the other day, uh, the new the new Starbucks CEO I don't know that his name but he uh, he had a retreat at one of the Starbucks kind of uh, mock up stores and he asked anybody on the team to go make like a mocha latte and nobody could do it hmm. and so he says everyone's going to work in the store half a day a week to your point well it keeps it real keeps it real it really keeps it real they couldn't even real. make a mocha latte and they're trying to decide what eight thousand baristas are going to do. It's crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. So that's good. I like that. So it, it, that, that worked for me and it just helped me um, stay true to what I really love yeah. doing is, yeah. is being with the people and building those relationships. So, you know, long story short, TD comes in, they buy Carolina first. Um, they put me over wealth management for North Carolina and South Carolina. 
um, the CEO of South Financial Group, which was the parent company mm -hmm. of Carolina First, <clears throat> is Lynn Harton. And um, after his required time there, he moved on to another bank, mm -hmm. to this bank out of Blairsville, Georgia, called United Community Bank, mm -hmm. that nobody had heard of. I hadn't yeah. heard of it. Nobody yeah. knew what Lynn had gone and done. And his first day of work, he probably texted me, um, and we just met for coffee. And we talked for a solid nine months <laughs> about um, me coming over. Yeah. And, you know, I read something in a book recently um, that it, it made me laugh because I thought, oh, gosh, that's what he was doing to me. Mm. And I had no idea. I really thought he was asking me about feedback of who could do <laughs> this job. I didn't know that he really wanted me <laughs> for the longest time. But, yeah. um, you know, I had a great job. There yeah. was no reason to to leave. Yeah. None of my jobs I've ever had a, a yeah. reason yeah. a reason to leave. Yeah. Um, TD's a great bank. <clears throat> and you were working for Rob Hoke there, right? So Rob was the regional there. Okay. Um, in wealth management, I actually reported to somebody out of New York City. Okay. So um, Rob, I definitely put myself in the in the local team, but because of my role, I yeah. reported elsewhere. Well, back to your original point about <clears throat> being a cheerleader or being enthusiastic. A long time ago, I was getting recruited by the Citadel and went to one of their games, and after the game, they said, well, come on the locker room, meet some of the team, you know. So I went in there. And, you know, you're, you're like a, you know, 17-year-old kid in high school and all these, like, big old college guys. The only guy who smiled and came over and wanted to talk to me was Rob Hoke. Oh. Just, he's like, hey, what's your name? Where do, where do you play? It just couldn't be nicer. Yeah. What a great guy. And, oh, my gosh, yeah. And he, he, unfortunately for me, he was a senior, so I never got to play with him, but – Years later, I saw him somewhere, and I'd, I'd kind of forgotten even who that guy was. And I saw him, and I'm like, I think that's the same guy. And I went up and talked to him, and he goes, yeah, that was me. Oh, that's you know? a great story. He's just, he's a wonderful guy. He is a great guy. He just carries it with him everywhere he goes. And he was good with Greenville, too. He was. Yep. But now he's kind of busy traveling the world. and Well, good for him. That's drinking, what he should be doing. Drinking wine. I think he's over in uh, Germany for Oktoberfest. Oh, good for him. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so you 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 went to work for Lynn eventually. Yes. At UCB yes. at the time. Yeah. So and we, were you initially running this market you're running now? Yes. And how long ago was that move? Ten years. Ten years. It was ten years in May. Wow. So May two thousand thirteen. And um, we had a little office upstairs in the courtyard Marriott. Mm-hmm. And um, there were there, three people came with me total. So yeah. it was me, somebody to run a branch, and then um, the lovely person that had been my assistant for so long yeah. came with me. Yeah, 10 years. So yeah. really, your whole career, if, if, uh, if, if the first bank, Carolina First, wouldn't have gotten sold, you could still be there. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, you Except like yeah, I popped off to Wachovia for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And so the great thing about um, Carolina First that I feel like I've brought with me through the years mm -hmm. is that commitment to the community. Mm -hmm. um, they really did, Mac Whittle did an amazing job of really making sure that um, the people, the team, yeah. was involved in the community. Yeah. And that is something that I have just loved yeah. doing and being a part of and serving on boards and being active, being an active member of the community. I think that's um, really special that we have the opportunity to do those things. Yeah. And I love that United Community yeah. also gives me the opportunity to continue um, the opportunity. I think it's, um, you know, we talked about relationships. Yeah. And some of the customers through the years, I don't want them to think of me as just Michelle Seaver, who I'm going to call when I need a statement yeah. or, you know, when I need a new debit card uh -huh. or need a loan or, you yeah. know, whatever the traditional banking piece is. I want them to think of me as Michelle Seaver, who um, is on, this board with them and they've seen it such and such mm -hmm. event and you know is involved in the community and is my banker yeah well you're doing a good job of that and i know that uh, ucb in particular does a lot of sponsoring of like uh different music events and things so we should talk about some kind of sponsoring of street musicians the buskers oh that's a great idea i'll help you with that yeah you can help me with that okay, we're, yeah. gonna do, we're gonna do a busker uh once a year like a busker stage and have a big deal sponsored by UCB. It'd that great. sounds great. That sounds right up our alley. Just VIP seats for you and David. Oh, thank you. 
Um, banking question. Yes. What, what, do you, what do you say when people say, hey, what's going to happen to the economy in the next year or two? So there's not a good answer there because <laughs> nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows. You know, I don't think anybody really knows. Yeah. I don't think we would have thought a year ago that interest rates were going to go up as high as they, as they have. Yeah. Um, they're still not really that high. Uh-huh. If you think back to, I don't know what um, the rate was on your first mortgage. I know mine in 1990. Six. Uh-huh. The end of 1996 was eight and a quarter. Okay. And I thought that was a really good rate. Yeah, under 10. It was under 10. Under 10. I thought that was fantastic. So I think it's, it's a cycle. Um, it's, you know, we've gotten so used to, you know, the 3% mortgages that we think that's uh, normal. And that's not really normal. Man, why didn't we just buy everything in town, yeah, you know? <laughs> Golly. Well, some people did. Yeah, some people did. Yeah, some people I bought did. something. I'm ha- happy to have one, well, at least one thing locked in. I'm, I'm happy to have mine refinanced at yeah. one of those low rates. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I really just don't think we, we know. I think that there are so many factors yeah. that we can't control. And so, you know, with our team, I try to say let's not focus on the things we can't control yeah. and let's focus on what we can control. I agree. And, and, again, in my businesses over the years, we've been pretty good at that. Like, you know, if there was a recession or something bad happened, <laughs> instead of freaking out about it, we'd say, <clears throat> we're stronger than our competitors, so we're going to survive, and some of them won't. Yeah. So when it comes back, we're going to be better off. So. Yes, and we definitely <clears throat> talk about the strength of the bank a good bit, and, you know, we have our team equipped to have those conversations. Yeah. We have conversations. You know, we don't talk about others. We talk about ourselves. So when you – when you, I think I know the answer to this, but if a, if a bank loans somebody money – it doesn't really matter what the interest rate is to the bank because you're going to make a small spread, whether it's 3% or 8%, right? So the, the spread is what, yes, the spread is what we make our money off yeah. of. Um, it's important that the spread align um, with, you know, what your net interest margin is, what you want your net interest margin to be. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to lend money for less than what your cost of funds is. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at that, you have to buy money with new deposit products in the four and a half five percent range. You can't lend to somebody at five and a half percent. You need a larger. So spread. in a situation where interest rates, let's just say, are high and people aren't buying as many houses, what does the bank focus on instead to make to make your targets? So people still are borrowing money. Okay. They still are borrowing money. Yeah. We're still having um, great loan growth. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of opportunity out there. We're, we're fortunate that we can yeah. lend money still. Yeah. We have about a 78% loan to deposit ratio right now, and that's that's pretty strong. So we're in a position where we can still lend money. We focus on you know our customers. We're not going to just lend money to lend money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know we want to make sure that we're taking care of our own. <clears throat> well. When I, when I was getting out of school, my favorite professor, I asked him for some advice, and he said, one of the things he said was, get a really good relationship with a banker. And um, I wondered, from your perspective, how would a young person do that? How would a young person like Create get- a good relationship with, you, with your bank. I think that, so I had an email Friday from an existing customer whose son lives in Atlanta. Mm-hmm and um, is not having a great experience with their bank and is looking to build a relationship Mm -hmm. with somebody similar to the relationship they have. Mm -hmm. So I think it's getting connected with somebody that you know and then helping them make the connection with Mm -hmm. somebody that is, you know, wherever they live. I think it's having that, you know, somebody that you know you can call. Mm -hmm. Just to make some kind of personal connection to a person. Some kind of personal connection. Yeah, I mean, there's there's all different Mm -hmm. ways to... um, you know, open accounts now, whether you can open them online or open them with a person or, you know, people don't go into branches as much as they used to, Mm -hmm. but I still think it's really important to have that person that you can text on a Saturday when something goes wrong or, you know, at night or whatever it is. I mean, I think everybody's kind of on call all the time now. Thank goodness. I mean, it certainly wasn't always that way with bankers. Mm -hmm. It used to be bankers hours and, you know, that kind of thing. Now, I mean, the people I deal with is 24 seven. Absolutely. They want to help you. Well, and they do want to help you. And I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about a 1-800 number either. Mm-hmm. It's got to be somebody that, that knows you. Cell and number. Knows the family. Yeah, somebody you can text, whether it's, you know, it may not be that big of a deal, or yeah. it may mean that, you know, your debit card's gotten um, stolen or the number's gotten mm-hmm. lifted from something. 
compromised. Well, in terms of selling, we talked earlier about you being a kind of a relationship seller. Have you done any formal sales training or do you follow anyone in sales? So I don't follow anyone necessarily in sales, um, except for you. Yeah, you go. Um, <laughs> with the new school. There you go. Um, but I've certainly been through sales training through my career. I think it's an ongoing. The bank piece. does, does yes, it? Yes, the, the different banks um, all do sales training. Um, you know, it might be needs based training. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to be just selling something to, you know, check a box. Yeah. By any means, yeah. it needs to be things that people people need. But it's about more of making sure that people are aware mm-hmm. of what we have to offer. Yeah. And that's our responsibility. Yeah. So in times where the, the loan volume may not be as high um, as it is, you know, we are currently talking to our teams about, you know, reach out. Yeah. Reach out to your customer you haven't talked to recently yeah. and say hello and make sure they're okay. And, you know, look at the products and services they have and make sure that they know what online banking can do for them or that they can set up alerts yeah. in their um, yeah. app. I, I agree. I mean, particularly since you already have the customers there, mm-hmm. it's, it's amazing if you, if, you, if you can get your people to show up and have a face-to-face discussion about, you know, what about this, what about this, let me see if I can help you. Um, that's, e- that's easy. Well, and even when we're out and about in the community, you know, yeah. be open to having a conversation with somebody too. We volunteered um, at Mill Village hmm. and packed um, boxes of produce one day. And I just randomly started talking to this gentleman who was right beside me, and he ended up moving his personal relationship to us. <laughs> um, it was great. You that know, I great. gave him my cell phone number, he texted me, I put him in touch with um, the branch that was closest to where he lived. Yeah. And I met him there to make the introduction. And then, I mean, he just kept on going. But he was so impressed that our bank was involved in the community mm. and was getting out of the office and trying to make a difference. That's great. <clears throat> That's great. Now, how about Chat GPT? Have you, have you played with that at all? I really haven't. No? You ought to check that out. It's, uh, I know. That may make me sound like a bit of a dinosaur. but No, I mean, um, it just came out not too long ago. But um, it's just interesting. Interesting. It might might be helpful with some of your some of your stuff. Uh, there's a lot. It's 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 it's, uh, it's changing rapidly, and it's it's still free. I mean, you can just yeah. go type it in and play with it. I bet you David knows about it. I'm sure he does. I know about it from a standpoint yeah. of you know I hear um, younger people talking yeah. about using it for answers. Yeah, or writing when, a paper. Or, right to write yeah. a paper and yeah. Um, I haven't actually played myself with it. If they told you to take over, you know, Anderson, or I don't know if you have Anderson or not, and say, say, uh, how would I uh, best approach the Anderson, South Carolina market for this kind of customer? Give me 10 bullet points, no more than 500 words. (laughs) There it is. Tell me. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, All right, so what's your favorite book? I have two. Okay, you can do two. Can I do two? Yes, of course. Okay, so the first one is a book called True North by Bill George. Okay. And um, years ago, Carolina First South Financial Group did a leadership program where they sent us to San Diego mm-hmm. for this program. And we had all kinds of people talking to us that wrote books, the head of Hewlett Packard at the time. I mean, all kinds of really influential people. Mm-hmm. And there was this gentleman, so I was probably... Oh, my upper, probably 38 mm-hmm. years old, had mm-hmm. two young children, mm-hmm. had a eight-year-old and five-year-old. And, um, you know, you have so many people that you're learning from and absorbing from and yeah. seeing different people's leadership styles. Mm-hmm. So this book called True North really gives you the permission to be authentic hmm. in your leadership skills. So it gave me the okay to be me mm-hmm. and to, to lead in a way that I thought was the right way to lead. So it talks about your moral compass and, you know, encourages you to follow what you think is right. Mm -hmm. And so that was really um, even just a pivotal pivotal Mm -hmm. time for Mm -hmm. me Mm -hmm. because, and I still go back to the book probably once a year and read a couple of chapters of it because it just is, it's a good read. I'll read it. That sounds like a great book. What's the other one? The other one is um, What Are You For? by Jeff Henderson. So that's a new book that I've just recently read. And um, he came and spoke to our quarterly 
um, senior leadership conference, mm -hmm. and um, he was in marketing for Chick Fil A, mm. and he talks about you know some of the bad ideas that you know he's <laughs> um, came up with the idea to drop the cows at the I don't know if it was the SEC championship game or mm -hmm. which game it was at the Peach or if it was Peach Bowl or whatever, yeah. and they all went on the field and they had to you know um, push them off all these cows off the field. You know, stop the game and push yeah, all the cows yeah. off the field. And he's like, oh no, my career is over. Yeah. And it ended up being this, you know, great idea. And I mean, talked about yeah. um, different experiences like that, but yeah. it helps you really refine um, what you're for and focused on, focus on, you know, that you're for the customer. Mm -hmm. You're for the, you know, the customer experience. Talked about Truett Cathy um, coming up with a My Pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, it talks a little bit about the Ritz Carlton style of how they, you check in, you know, you're parking your car and they radio somebody and tell them your name that you're on the way up to yeah. the check-in and then they yeah. greet you again. Yeah. So it talks about that, you know, customer experience and being for the customer. Yeah. And that really resonates with us as a company. That's two good books. I'll read them. How about a uh, favorite word? Favorite word. So when I first thought about that, it was yes. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what every salesperson would want? Yes. But, um, you know, I've reflected a little bit more on that, and I think probably trust. Mm. Um, it's important, and, and relationship. I probably yeah. have more. That I, no, I've just given you like several. But I feel like all of those are really important. Yes is important because we need to be affirmed. Yeah. But trust is important because we need people to trust us yeah. in all areas of our lives. Yeah. People yeah. need to trust us. Yeah, once you have the trust, the yes is not that difficult, is right. it? Right. And most importantly, what's your favorite band? Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie and the Blowfish. Yes. All right. That's what a good Carolina girl should say. That's right. Um, that's great. All right. So what, um, do you want to promote anything in particular today? Well, I th feel like I've talked a lot about the bank yes. already yes. and the bank and the community. And I didn't mean to talk about the bank so much. It's just a part of who I am. Sure. And um, the day-to-day -day, um, life. You know, I love that we are committed to the Greenville community. Yeah. Really, we're in North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and Alabama. Mm -hmm. So we're much bigger than we were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. We were a $7 billion bank 10 years, and we're 10 years ago, and we're almost a $30 billion bank Wow! now. So the growth has been amazing, but it's been good growth yeah. with the right people for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, we are headquartered here in yeah. Greenville yeah. and are building our headquarters, finishing our headquarters right there to the left of the Grand Bohemian. That is going to be so beautiful. It is really great. We took a tour with the team last Friday. It was yeah. one of the last tours yeah. that we could give before they start work on the elevator. Hmm. And that apparently takes two months to put uh, an elevator okay. together. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Well, there's three of them, so I assume that's you know it takes that long. But they come in a gazillion pieces, and um, it's going to be so great. We're hmm. excited to be together. Mm -hmm. You know, right now we're um, in the office that I'm in. Um, on East North Street, mm -hmm. we have um, the headquarters office is on a floor of the one building, mm -hmm. and then we have some rented space down the street at River Place, um, and Ooh. we have an op center there on in Broad Street at the old EP2 building is what people sometimes refer to it as. Yeah, yeah. So the EP2 building will stay, but then the other three will come together. So it's going to be so nice for us to have our team, most of the team here all together in one building. So I'm really excited about that. You have your office picked out. My office is absolutely already picked out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's been picked out for a while. Well, I want to come see you uh, when you get in there and, uh, and, and get the tour. I would love that. Okay. Um, it's, going to be, it's going to be a great spot, and we're excited. I think it just continues to emphasize our commitment yeah, to Greenville big, and the big, state of South Carolina. That's a big commitment. That's a big commitment. It's a big building. Well, Michelle, we're very proud of you. You've done great uh, with every job you've had. You prepared for a banking career with your accounting uh, degree and your work at the bank in the summers. I mean, it's all kind of going, you know, just like it's supposed to. So proud of you, and uh, you're also a great, I would say you're kind of a secret salesperson. Mm. You do it with the relationships, <laughs> you know, so you're, you're getting your sales done. So anyway, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, thanks. Hey.